Hello and welcome back to another Jagged Alliance 3 guide. My name is Saiken and today I'm doing the fourth out of four build guides that I wanted to showcase to you. I will call this one the Moral High Ground uh, build, which is really going to be a combination of uh, wisdom talents and something else that you want to do. The example that I'm giving today is one of a pure support character, but you can build it in many, many different uh, ways. The point of showcasing this is just uh, to highlight how great morale is and how you can impact uh, that with the right build. So today's uh, build will be MD, the medical doctor in my campaign. And uh, he is a sniper by trade, uh, very similar to the uh, silent and deadly uh, build that I have um, showcased the last time. This one here uses sniper. So um, I will repeat really quickly. You want to get a thermal scope to negate any form of cover hunkering down and uh, so on. You want to get a UV dot uh, to increase one aim level automatically. And then you want to uh, put a silencer in for a moderate crit chance as well as uh, a heavy stock for more aim levels. The bipod and the expanded mechs are optional, but uh, wouldn't hurt. So pick any sniper of your liking. They are fantastic weapons. Now, when we look at the actual build, you can see that MD, despite being quote unquote, a support character has solidly killed 210 people throughout his career most of them with headshots and a phenomenal accuracy ratio of 85%, really landed a lot of uh, hits and quite a few critical strikes on top of it. All of that is fine, but not necessary to make the build work. What the build really wants to do is it wants to uh, increase morale. So you will see a bit of a variation. Don't look at the talent selected, but follow my train of thought of what we want uh, to do. The build focuses heavily around wisdom. And if I was to build the build again, I would start with a character that has at least 90 points of wisdom in order to make that build really work well. MD here was focusing on healing. I would not do that again. I mentioned it in my uh, review of perk uh, guides that uh, healing in my perspective can be much easier done by having a highly medical trained character and then just training all of the other characters for two or three iterations. Even if it costs some money, everybody ends up with 30-ish medical, which is more than enough for them to stitch themselves together. Medical as it stands is not fully worth it. However, this build here is not focusing on medical, it is focusing on morale. So let's shortly talk about morale because it's important for this build. Morale has five different levels. It starts at level three, which is normal morale. It can go up, uh, can go down up to two levels, which is low morale and very low morale, aka level one and two. And it can move up to uh, high and very high morale, aka level four and five. So depending on which morale level you're on, you get you are benefiting from a couple of quite sizable benefits. The higher you are on the morale level, the more AP you get. On low and very low morale level, you get AP detraction, uh, one and three respectively. And on low morale levels, you on top of that will run uh, the risk of having panics or a berserk going. Berserk meaning uh, the character will do whatever they want and panic meaning the character will essentially not do anything other than run away and hunker down. Both of it you want to prevent. Morale can very easily drop just with a lot of wounds that are taking, mortar rounds that are being eaten, gas that's being inhaled. Uh, so add that on top of uh, effects like fatigue, which also drain further uh, AP and uh, will prevent you from having free movement range and you're in a world of trouble. All of a sudden your characters can not really do what they are supposed to do. The reason why I'm pointing this out is low morale is one of the few mechanics where you can actually lose a fight even though you are doing things right just if RNG isn't necessarily in your favor and the mercenaries don't uh, really hold up their end of the bargain. It gets worse if the mercenaries don't like each other because then morale even drops further. Now, the easiest way to raise morale is 
to actually either perform really cool combat maneuvers, aka headshots in uh, blowing a lot of people up, or uh, hitting special attacks. It could be Isis Ice Storm or the Overwatch attacks, every, anything that really counts as a special attack, or just generally dealing a, a shit ton of damage. All of that is, however, random and does not necessarily always secure. So there is no reliable method, uh, if you don't spec specifically for it, to regularly increase morale. So what you want to do, therefore, is you want to make sure that one character in your team is having the moral high ground. And that's exactly what we're currently uh, today talking about. Wisdom. Not only an important stat in the game because it allows you to learn faster, but it also allows a support build. So the build will go as follows. Uh, the character will start with distracting shot, kind of goes more into the uh, rifle, uh, automatic rifle route, depending on how you want to build it. But distracting shot will help other people that are pinned down or overwatched by simply removing set condition from them. Nothing major, but it's a good starting point into that build. Now, the next level is where things are all of a sudden starting to get a turn for the better, as we're backing into Inspiring Strike. Inspiring Strike increases morale whenever you deal more than 50 points of damage with a single attack. Mind you, this works phenomenally well uh, when you're using sniper rifles, because all of a sudden you will deal a lot of damage, and that will always increase the morale. Mind you, morale increases are cumulative to other increases, such as if you're blowing someone's head off, it's a good kill. But Inspiring Strike can trigger on top of that, so all of a sudden you could uh, get two morale levels. What happens when your morale is above uh, level 3, so 4 and 5? Well. Great that you asked. Number one, you get more action points, um, one or uh, one, respectively two more action points, which is great. Imagine that just being a standard, everybody has uh, more action points. Two, you get more free movement range. Imagine everybody having more free movement range. Three, you slightly aim better. And four, you're slightly better at uh, range plus you don't suffer any of the negative consequences. So in other words, once the morale of the team is high, you give everybody else more AP, better aim, more movement to work with. So that in itself is a cumulative effect. You don't want to have multiple moral, uh, morale characters, but you want to have one that does it regularly. And Inspiring Strike is the way to go. In my perspective um, and in the experience of my playthrough, it just triggers over and over. Fantastic ability that I would highly, highly recommend. Now, you are only at level three at this point and you're wondering, gosh, what would I uh, take? Well, good that you asked. The next uh, that you would take is Dire Warning. When morale is high or very high, there is a 15% chance to cause panic with an attack that deals damage. That does not only um, apply to the character that is being hit, but it applies to characters in a, sh uh, in a small circle around it. I've uh, seen others uh, starting to panic. I assume it is in close proximity, you know, aka point blank range, so I take a wild guess here, it's four tiles of uh, range but I have not looked into the code, nor could I find a co uh, confirmation of that online. For now, what you need to know is, if you don't kill an enemy, they do have a good chance to panic. Even if you kill the enemy, enemies around it have a good chance to panic. Panic is a fantastic effect. It will allow you uh, to basically disable that character for two turns, which is as good as a kill because you can run after them and just kill them afterwards. So that is a 15% insta-kill chance for anyone around the target. And it gets better than that. Once you're done with those three skills, we are taking our eyes on shock and awe. High morale when starting combat. So that per definition already means everybody has more AP when they are starting combat. Great. And then deal 10% extra damage when morale is high and very high. That of course is only for the particular character uh, with the trait, but Think about the inspiring strike where you want to deal more damage in order to get morale even up further. So those two synergize very well together. Those two synergize very well together. Overall, those three abilities are just fantastic. So 
We go distracting shot into inspiring strike into dire warning into shock and awe and that's the core of the build that I would uh, recommend uh, you to to run through now if you're in that situation how would I build the build further to make it very very efficient since you so far have only used four out of nine perks there is still room to grow and how you should grow is by improving your standard damage even further. For starters, I would use Flanker as the next level just to get that extra bit of damage. 15% more against flanked enemies are fantastic. Mind you, if you have a thermal scope, everybody accounts as flanked because there is no such thing as cover. Great, isn't it? That means more often inspiring strike will uh, trigger and that means more often uh, you will get very high morale. Additionally, after that, I would potentially scale into beefed up for more hit points and then followed up by Vanguard for the ability to get 30 grit whilst you are just standing in the open as a sniper, which will get, uh, get you in the end. Uh, JD here has around 115 hit points plus 30 grit makes it 145. So that's a very, very tanky sniper. I gave him heavy armor because uh, I didn't have the need for a lot of extra movement. He was quite stationary. Uh, and so he has 60% damage reduction on top of that. So that's another three uh, talents gone, which means you're currently at seven uh, talents out of nine. I would then follow it up by Dead Eye for extra crit chance per aim, which for a sniper is always a fantastic option. That will give you more chance to actually crit enemies and further deal more damage. This build here with 10% extra damage from here and 15% extra damage from here already has a very high damage, uh, um, uh, damage floor, but with Dead Eye you're increasing the damage ceiling on top of it and making it even worse for the enemies. And finally, as the last talent, I would use Lightning Reactions. Basically these three talents I would put into most of my builds, uh, mainly because I play Mission Impossible High Lethality and having the ability to avoid death is absolutely paramount. You don't want to invest a lot of time into a character just to find out uh, they get unluckily crit. So. Uh, th this is what I would definitely recommend as three talents. If you are more of a glass cannon type of player, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In which case I would potentially uh, scratch all of that up here and instead uh, go deeper into dexterity. You could either go into untraceable, into ambusher and then take the sharpshooter talent, uh, which is similar to the silent and deadly uh, mm, uh, build. Or alternatively, you could go for agility and just make it really kind of a solo roamer, uh, flanker into fast runner, into frog leaping for a lot of free movement. And then you can uh, pick total concentration where as soon as you kill the first enemy, you gain another 30% damage, 30 here, 10 here and uh, 15 here will be a very very solid damage floor so that would be more the damage variant of the build i personally like balanced builds a bit more because they tend to perform better specifically if you play iron man and don't save scum that that will be much much better for you but yeah that's really the core of the build there isn't that much um, game footage that uh, I have to show other than telling you that uh, the characters that uh, MD was working with at the end of the day had 20 plus AP every single turn. Part of it of course was their high agility but a big part of it was starting with high morale then letting uh, MD take a shot or two and everybody all of a sudden had very high morale giving them a lot of free movement and a lot of AP to work with. So if you have slept on morale so far, I hope that changes after hearing all of that. I hope you liked the build guide and let me know what your uh, experience with the moral high ground looks like. Take care and have a good one. Bye bye.